Ricky Paisano has been a regular in the juvenile justice system. Over the past four years, he has spent nearly nine months here in Lake County Juvenile, and more recently, another 16 months at a residential placement facility in Nevada. When he didn't return to his placement in Nevada after a weekend home pass, Ricky was picked up on a bench warrant. One of my boys, he got shot, and uh, I had to take him to the hospital, and they ran my name at the hospital, and I still had the warrant from running from placement. Although Ricky is now an adult, because the warrant was issued by the juvenile courts, he'll have to face the music in LCJC once more. And when I think about it sitting here in the juvenile, I'm 18. As soon as I get here, get out of here, I'm on my own. Like how a lot of the younger kids, they're going home to mommy and daddy. I'm not going home to mommy and daddy. I'm going back to the streets. I ain't going to lie to nobody or tell no fairy tale. I'm going back to the streets. Ricky wasn't even yet a teenager when he started looking for kinship and guidance on the streets. My dad was incarcerated, I didn't know him, and my mom got incarcerated when I was like eight or nine. Well, I was hanging out with older people, 17, 18 years old, smoking weed, robbing, just doing whatever I had to put food in my stomach. Food in my stomach, my sister, because... With over a decade of experience shooting inside the criminal justice system, Calamari's producers know that when things get loud, Oftentimes, there's something more serious going on behind the noise. This time, however, it's just a few kids in the Delta Wing blowing off some steam. Repeat offenders and known troublemakers make up LCJC's Charlie Delta Wing population. Here, staff can keep a closer eye on the kids who have a tendency to lash out. When it gets loud, uh, I'm, it just gets loud. I mean, you can't really stop it. I mean, the DOs probably wouldn't tell them to ask them nicely, please. But in the end, it's up to them whether they want to shut up or not. That wasn't me. That wasn't I would just scream and keep up. Those four walls, they will get to you, and they will always win. You know, there ain't no win. You could beat on your door, beat on the walls all you want, but in the end, them, they're always going to win. Doesn't matter what you do, how hard you scream, how much you cry, it doesn't matter. Ricky's a very frustrating case because for as minimal of education as he's completed, he's really a very intelligent young man. Veteran residential supervisor Jamie Badanish has spent 22 years working with kids at Lake County Juvenile. She says juveniles like Ricky are especially perplexing. He has a lot of talent and a lot of potential. He's a very personable young man, but yet he's gang through and through. The sad thing, Ricky, is, is you are no dummy. By any means of the word, you are no dummy. You just can't stay in one place long enough to accomplish it. I think that Ricky is he's just destined to be part of the gang. I'm quite sure he's got some rank now, and I think he likes, you know, giving orders to the so-called foot soldiers and so forth and so on. How long have you been banging now? Wait, how old were you when you started? Eleven. Eleven? I'll never be ashamed of nothing I've done. I, I was put in a situation, and I made the best out of the situation as a young kid. I mean, I mean, what, what else can I, I can't get a job. I was 14 years old. I can't get no job. I mean, I did what I had to do. I think it's really unfortunate because there's still that small portion of him that would like to live 
on the right side of the law as opposed to the wrong side of the law. I look at it now like, like wow, like I look at pictures and stuff and I'm seeing how skinny I was and like just like, wow, that was me. And I was hanging out with all the bigger, older cats doing all the stuff you know what I'm saying that adults do. Not saying like every adult does it, but doing all the stuff that the street scene and I was so young, little, I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised I made it through it like, like just realizing, you know what I'm saying, the bandage that people had over me. How old were you when you first came to us? 12? 14. 14, is that when you did the armed robbery? Yeah. Not trying to incriminate you, but how did you end up doing the armed robbery? Who came up with that? Me, I just, was just I was just walking by the liquor store, my pockets was empty, so I went and dropped my stuff off at a buddy's crib and ran in there. At 14 years old? Yeah. I told her she has a certain amount of seconds to open the cash register on the shooter. I probably would have shot her easily, very easily. And this, that's just the way I thought. I didn't care about. I didn't care about myself. I didn't care about no one else. You think you have the ability to give the street up? Yeah, when I get my job. Get tired of living that, man. Yeah, I do. I, I just tell you the truth. Sometimes I get, I'm sick of it. Wow. Yeah. Miracles do happen. Yeah. Ricky, you've never been that hard-hearted. That's the thing. You're not a hard-hearted kid. Ricky Paisano is just one of the hundreds of thousands of kids nationally who find themselves behind bars. The ones who wind up here in the Indiana juvenile justice system have a better chance than some others. Not all states look at their juvenile populations with an eye on rehabilitation. That's what's really beautiful about the juvenile code in the state of Indiana. We have, oh my gosh, an arsenal of things that we can, and services we can provide to children and families to really, you know, mend all of their issues. And you just keep trying. But there's a limit to what the courts can do when a juvenile continually reappears at intake, seemingly worse off than the time before. Michael Shane? Yeah. You look a little different. You got your hair cut. Where's your glasses? No, I'm wearing I would never recognize you. You're in trouble again. When you see somebody so young and, and innocent in one picture, and then it looks like they lived 20 different lives in, in such a short time, that's where we ask questions about the family life, health problems, drugs. Are you high? When was the last time you smoked? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know. Yesterday? No. Today? No. Last week? No. Okay, for some reason I'm not believing you. On an afternoon in early September, when most teenagers are settling into their new school year, 17-year-old Michael is back at LCJC for the third time on suspicion of burglary, the same charge for which he's already on probation. I'm sober. Right now. You're sober? Mm -hmm. There's a difference between being sober and being high. No, I'm not, there's nothing wrong with Every child has a story. We all have a story, you know, in our life. And if you can get little pieces and bits, and it, it's like a big puzzle. Does your mother know you're here? Yeah. Where did they arrest you at? In my house. By the time they get arrested by the police, you know, they give us a little piece of the puzzle. I can't ask you if you did this or not. By law, I can't. I'm just gonna ask you questions about your school, if you do drugs, your family life. Then we can try through our questioning to try to get a bigger piece of the puzzle. Well, I mean, what's going on with you? Just running with the wrong crowd? I don't know. Not every kid that comes through here is cooperative. I could tell you look a little ticked right now. I mean, just your facial expression, though, only really, truly, that, that child really knows how they're feeling. We can guess, we can try through our questioning and watching their nonverbal and their, you know, how they hold their head up, how they answer the questions, but really only they know really how they feel. You're not angry about being here? Yeah, I'm angry, you know, no one wants to get arrested. I mean, you know you're on probation, right? It allows us to peek inside so we can give information to the next person because once the child leaves us, there's probably going to be, you know, five different people that are going to be attached to this case at least. And the judge depends on the intake department to make sure we're reporting accurately. We're responsible for that. I'm not a, like a bad kid, you know, I just make dumb decisions. It's just that I just don't want to be here. You know, I want to go home. Just 
It's not a nice place to be here, you know? It's not supposed to be a nice place. I mean, you know you're on probation, right? Yes, you know, your PO's name? Uh, Miss Walter. Enith Walters? I mean, they have you right now on formal probation for burglary for the same thing that you're being charged with today. Do you, you understand that? Yeah, I know. This, this doesn't look good. Do you realize that? I mean, you're looking at me kind of hard, and, and I get that. You know what? Just your eyes. You're looking at me kind of hard like you don't even want me to talk anymore. No, it's all right. It's all right? Yeah. Police, I think, you know, they come after me because of my past history. You know, it's easier for them to point a finger at someone who's done something like this before. You can't blame them because I did put myself in a situation, but it does kind of suck. Michael is days away from his 18th birthday, and approaching adulthood is a tricky time to find yourself in juvenile court. So I would just ask that the court please allow this young man one more opportunity he understands that the next time he's in trouble, he'll be in the adult court, so. When a person turns 18, there's not, at least in the juvenile court system, a lot of choices for us to make. Because everyone's looking, oh, we've got this little window of time to work with them, and it's not long enough to effectuate a change. And I just don't know, at 18, if he sits here for three or four months, I, I don't know what that's going to do for him. Rehabilitation programs can take a year or more to complete, so that option appears to be off the table for Michael. When you're 17 and three quarters, there's not a lot of resources out there, and there's probably not a lot of people that want to take a chance on you for that short period of time. When you were arrested in February of 08 for burglary, and they gave you 90 days, 80 days are stayed, and you did a remaining 10 days here, and you got released, which means if you get into any more trouble, it's really up to your magistrate to decide what they're going to do with you. If they don't take advantage prior to turning 18 to the services that this court offers, they're screwed. And I know that sounds very cold, you know, but realistically, that's the way it is. They will only be a number. The adult system will not coddle you. You won't be held by your hand to make sure that you do your substance abuse program or that you do your family counseling or that you take your medication. You know, all of that, you know, is done and over. This is my second chance, you know, for me to do right. And if I don't, you know, when I turn 18, that's just a felony and that's gonna stay with me for the rest of my life. So I had to try to you know, do better, not just for me, but for like my family. I don't want them to see me in a place like this anymore. Cause I told myself I didn't want to come back the first time. And here I am again. A trip to the adult system is also at stake for Ricky Paisano. Ricky's previous stint at LCJC ended with him being placed in a long-term rehabilitation program in Nevada. Since then, he ran away from placement, turned 18, and did time in adult prison. Now, he's once again back at LCJC, facing the music for running away. How much longer did you have before you would have completed? Like four months. That's it? But I was already there for like 17. Well, but at that point, four months is a drop in the bucket, dude. I was only out for a month. After a month, uh, I caught a pistol charge in Chicago. I got sentenced to a year in Illinois Department of Corrections. I've been out on parole ever since then. And juvenile, yeah, it's a little better than um, adult, but when you get to adult, it's, it's nasty. If, if you don't like rats and roaches, just stay away. I got an anger issue, and that's a way to challenge my anger. And you got a control issue. Yeah. You want control. Yeah. But that's all the game. The rankings, and you know, you've grown. You got you got a little bit of rank now, don't you? Uh, I don't know. I can't. I ain't gonna, I can't speak <laughs> on that. I just don't know if he'll ever make it, and I think it's really unfortunate because I think he's got a lot of potential. I think he could really achieve anything he chose to if he applied himself in a positive way. The, actually, the night before I came in here, I got shot at, I almost, I almost lost my life. Pulled into a gas station, I had some buddies in the car, 
As I was pulling out the gas station, um, they shot at us. One of my boys, he got shot, and uh, I had to take him to the hospital, and they ran my name at the hospital, and I still had the warrant for money from placement. Ricky's been locked up at LCJC for more than a month. At his court hearing tomorrow, he will learn his fate in the juvenile system. Even though he's 18, the judge can still keep him detained for not completing his juvenile placement. Or she could wave him across the street to Lake County Adult Jail. I've already been to adult prison. I've been there. I've seen it at 17 years old. I was with people that's been in locked up 15, down for murder, all, all that stuff. I, I've been there. I've seen everything. I, I see what it's like, and you know, I don't want to be like that. You know, tomorrow's going to be a very interesting day because I really, I, this is one that I really can't even tell you that I have a gut feeling for. It, it's going to be interesting because we're, the judge is going to be a little limited in what she's going to be able to do with him. So frankly, I really don't know. I'm kind of anxious to see that myself. Okay, you guys can stand up. 17-year-old Michael is on his way to court where the judge will have to consider his past offenses to decide whether he should be released or stay behind bars. They said that, um, it's not looking good for me, and that um, I might have to serve like an 80-day commitment, maybe. Weren't you just here not that long ago? Like in March. What are you doing back visiting? You missed us? <laughs> huh? No, not that much. Are you, are you on probation? Yeah, I'm on probation. So what's going to happen? I don't know. OK. Man, you guys got to start thinking. Oh, it's nerve-wracking talking to the judge, because you plan stuff like right before you go, you know, you think of everything you're going to say, then when you're actually there, it doesn't come out the way you thought it was. And it's, it's, um, it's nerve-wracking, really nerve-wracking. In the juvenile justice system, kids who are almost 18 are walking a tightrope between the adult and juvenile correctional systems. It's a serious matter for this court to decide that it's going to invest itself in a child, and I don't see that... Um, there's going to be a lot of bang for our buck, to be perfectly honest. The closer a kid is to 18, the judge has fewer resources at her fingertips to help change a juvenile who continues to reoffend. For some, the next stop will be across the street, adult jail. I try and let them know it's going to get, it'll get rough over there. But they don't, they still, they see it, and they, they still don't know it, but when reality hits and they go through them doors, and they look up there and they mean at them like new meat, that's, what, that's when it finally kicks in. I would tell them, like, you ain't been through the stuff that I've been through. Prison's a lot different than this. It's not, you don't got DOs and stuff around you. You're just, you're locked in a cage with about 100 other criminals, rapists, murderers. It's like I know what I got to deal with, you know what I'm saying? I, I know what could happen, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's nothing that you can be afraid of. You can't live scared, you know what I'm saying? You just got to be cautious, you know what I'm saying? Not, not to mess up. And, not to let things like that happen to you. Like Michael and Ricky, Miguel is nearing his 18th birthday. Though they are all at the end of the road in the juvenile system, the only thing common about Miguel is his juvenile record. Criminal recklessness, assault with a deadly weapon, possession of marijuana. He's probably been here at least, I'd say about six or seven times. Ain't got no permit, ain't got no permit. A bunch of our ladies of probation. And every time he's come, he's come with heavy charges. Criminal mischief, then another criminal recklessness in there somewhere. But once he gets here, he's a whole different individual. He's focused, he's getting visitation, he's reading good books. And then what I like about him is he shares his books. So he tries to help the other guys that's in the hallway that he sees that's going down the wrong path. I remember going to college since I was 16. Like, the second time I got locked up, I was there for about 15 months. And I got my GD there. I took the ACT test. I did well. They sent my transcripts out. You know what I'm saying? I got accepted at Purdue. That's one thing I can say. The kid has never been in here for missing school or anything like that. And I think he makes, like, A's, B's. He's really focused. And he sees the future. But he'll tell me, it's just where I'm from. Where I'm from. People are not used to being successful. That's, it says, 
Gangsta T.S. Nation. Two weeks after he gets released and he's right back in that jungle, he changes. Something I should have thought better. Now it's like, I could do good in school. It's just I can't be free long enough to finish a semester or just complete a class. It's the unusual or maybe never case that someone would just go out and start committing crimes uh, and, and have this great school record. But it's pretty hard to be good if you already have a bent toward you know, getting into trouble or all of your friends are, are the type that are getting into trouble. Um, and so it just becomes a way of life. And in some neighborhoods, it's almost like do unto others before they do it to you. I'm going to finish college and I'm going to get my degree. I'm probably go in further than that, try to get a master's. You know, my mom, she got a master's. She's going for a doctorate. Yeah. So, you know, got to do something like that. And my parents are beautiful people. You know what I'm saying? If you'll meet my parents, you will never think that I would be going through stuff like how I've done in my life. But it's, it's not on them, you know what I'm saying? My mother, she's always been there for me. And my dad, he just gets tired of this. He was like, if you, if you get locked up again, you know what I'm saying, don't expect me to come see you, because I, I, I can't do it. He said he can't see me in a place like this. But my parents love me. They always been there for me. They never turned their back on me, nothing like that. You can't live someone's life for them. You can only give them the tools to maybe live their life in a different way, hopefully a better way. And so um, it is frustrating when they don't take advantage of what we've provided to them. It's gotta be my last time. I'm tired of all this. It's, I've been tired of it for a long time. It can be frustrating, and it gets frustrating when you pick up the paper and you know you've put in a lot of hard work to a kid and he or she is about to do 20 to 25 years in prison. It becomes frustrating. When you think about it, you know what I'm saying, you can't gangbang for your whole life, you know what I'm saying? You can't be a gangster all your life. That's, it's not gonna get you nowhere. You got, you got to, you're gonna have to grow up one day, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna need to get a job. And it's gonna be a lot harder, you know what I'm saying, getting a job with this. But I'm not somebody who's gonna fail. Once I set my mind to do something, it's gonna get done. Thank you.